Hello everyone. So we are going to be working on the baler this time. Uh, got the John Deere hooked up to it, got it pulled up to the house here, and now we're just kind of going to go through everything and see what it needs this year. I want to replace the oil in this uh, gearbox here. Um, I got a bunch of new teeth for this or tines or whatever you want to call them. I got a bunch of those new. So we're going to replace those or whatever ones are worn out. And then there's some that are like completely missing, like right here. So I want to get all those freshened up. I got, I think I got 20 of them or 25 of them. So probably not going to need all of them, but I bet you these are worn down pretty short. So we'll just have to see when we uh, get those over here. Um, what else? That's really pretty much it. Um, we want to tension all the chains, which we did last year. And honestly, they still feel really good. So probably won't need to do that this year. But yeah, I think we need to change the twine in it. I feel like we are almost out. I kind of remember that from last year. Not quite. We're getting there though. There's just a little bit left in there. So we're gonna have to take a look at that. Maybe get another set in here. So when um, these do run out, we won't have to stop or anything. We'll just get another set of them in there. We got a couple extra parts in there that I wasn't aware of. That's pretty much all we're gonna be doing. So I guess we'll start with draining that gearbox and changing the oil on that. So let's get to it. So I always take the fill plug out first just to make sure it will loosen, which it is, so I don't really have to worry about that. And next we'll take the drain off, which is just caked in a bunch of stuff, but at least it's coming off. There's just a bunch of crud all over that. I've never actually drained this the two years I've owned this, so probably should have done this right away. Ooh, that is milky. It's pretty thick. It, this uh, The manual calls for 90 weight in this. So at least it's nice and thick and not super watered down. It's not shiny or anything like that, so that's good. If it was glittery, then we would have a different problem, but it's probably just fine. It's probably good enough. Put that back on there. Get that tight. Now, Take this off. So it calls for 90 weight. I am using this ADW90. It's cheap and it'll be fine. We basically just have to fill it up until it's uh, coming out of this fill plug. Two quarts gets it right up to the top. So we are good there. Get this plug back in here and we'll be good to go. We're gonna take this lid off here and see what this looks like in here. I feel like I've taken this apart before, but I can't remember. I might just need to get a ratchet for this. It's probably about a half inch, if I had to guess. It is half inch. All right, here we go. What do we got in here? It is quite literally just a gearbox, so. It's actually plenty full. I guess I'm not sure how full it's supposed to be, but it's half full. And that's probably enough. It's really not terribly milky either. So it's not like it's getting water in it because it's covered by this lid and stuff too. And it honestly doesn't rain on this machine because it's always inside when it's raining. So it's probably fine. I actually feel like the last time I opened this up, I dumped some oil in here, so maybe I'll just do the same again. I have a little bit more of that 90 weight, and so here's the inside of that gearbox. You can see the oil comes up right at about halfway to the both of the gears and that shaft running through there. So it'll be fine. Yeah. Honestly, there's enough in here. I'll just keep an eye on it. I'm not going to worry about it right now. So let's get the lid back on. So I have the owner's manual for this baler and in that owner's manual, it actually says we're supposed to 
grease this knotter every 10,000 bales or annually. I will not hit anywhere close to the 10,000 bales, so I'm gonna go with the annually. Um, I believe this year I will probably bale about 1,200 bales if my calculations are correct. So give or take some obviously, but that's my estimates anyway. So that should be about it. I just have all of these on the top. So there's three for each side apparently. All right, all good. I've gone around and looked for more um, grease points on this and I honestly couldn't find any more. I don't know if there are any more or what, and in the manual I couldn't find any more either, so these six are what we're going with. <laughs> so now for these tines here. Um, I don't know how to get to them. Looks like there's some screws on the top here that might be holding these on. And then there's some bolts back there, so that's probably how you get them off. It only looks like we're missing two of them, so I'm tempted just to replace the two. I'm actually going to get one of the new ones and see how much shorter these are. Alright, so here's one of the new ones. Let's see how much shorter it actually is to the spring. Eh, it's really not that much shorter. Maybe like three quarters of an inch shorter. So not really terrible. How many are on here? Six times four, so 24. I actually have enough to replace all of them. <laughs> Should I replace all of them? Seems like a lot of work. Uh, maybe I should try taking one of these guard things or whatever they're called off first and seeing how big of a pain in the butt that is. All right, let's see how easily this comes off. Not like nothing to even grip to yeah not very easily uh, I'm not sure about this honestly at this point I kind of feel like missing two isn't that bad and honestly it's been picking up just fine so I might just not worry about it right now unless I break more of them, but that's pretty unlikely. So I think I'm just gonna say screw it and leave it alone. I think we're going to not do this because this is uh, gonna be a lot more work than I was anticipating. I thought it would be easier to get these off of here, but they're on there pretty good. I'm thinking just missing two of these isn't going to really damper anything and we're still going to be able to pick up most of the hay so I'd say we're going to call it there. So I did miss one thing. The manual does say to lubricate the uh, PTO shaft U-joints uh, every 50 hours so we need to do that. We probably won't actually go over more than that in a year so I'll probably only have to do this every year as well once a year but we'll get that done right now as well let's take the shield off here and then we should be able to get to that fitting Broke that right off. <laughs> that one's a little tighter. Well, since that didn't want to work, we're gonna try a screwdriver with a crescent wrench. Nope, we're just ruining the bolt. Let's try heating it up. All right, 
Tomorrow I'm gonna get smoke coming from out of the inside, so that's a good sign, I guess. Let's see if we can crack it loose now with this. Odds are it's just gonna break, but. Hey, we got it. Just need a little bit of heat. All right. Now, hopefully we can take this off. Might need to straighten this back up. There we go, wow. Look at all those sticks in there. Holy cow. All right. Well, there's a lot of sticks in there. <laughs> so the manual does say that you're supposed to uh, take this off and loosen these nuts and spin the clutch, but I spun it last year while using it, so I know it's working. There. All of that just to do that. <laughs> but now we know it's done and it'll be good for next year. So now I'm gonna put this cover back on. Got all those sticks out of there too, which was good. One PTO shaft fitting done. That one is destroyed. So I guess we'll be replacing that one. When you have equipment, it's nice to just have a bunch of grease zerts just like this because they usually always have some type of an issue. 7 sixteenths. Yep. Ooh. It was also loose. Yeah, we could have just put a straight one on here now that I think about it, but whatever. It's tight on there. You can probably tell that I've never actually done this to these before. I didn't know they were on here, so get some grease in them now. Oh, there we go. Coming out the back side. It's definitely taking grease though, so it took quite a bit. Alright, and now for our last one. Last one is right on here. So, get it cleaned off. This one looks like it's had some grease put in it fairly recently. Not by me, but okay. <laughs> we are now good. Grease in all the spots. So if you guys remember last year, I kept shearing off the shear bolt on this flywheel here. So I actually found the replacement shear bolts and the, the screws that I was using in here um, were not, they were working, but they were breaking. They were shearing off really quick because they were not the same diameter. So I'm going to take this one off and show you. What I noticed the last time I took this off oh this is actually a new one so last year when i took one of these off the last one that i had in there it was actually like half cut in half because these are just a lot smaller so here's the difference you can see that it's uh a decent amount the threads are actually well this is a coarse thread on the bolt that i put in there and then there's a fine thread. So the threads are the same, but you can see it steps up after the thread to be a thicker bolt. So it'll be nice to have the one that's supposed to be in there in there. So I'll just get that put back in the hole here. So then we'll just put their nut on here. I guess if it comes loose, we have, I forget how many I actually bought, 10? Yeah. So I have 10 of these. So I'll just leave those in the toolbox on the baler so I have them if one breaks. Hopefully it won't be as bad as it was last year because last year I was cutting through trees or baling trees with it. So the shear was having quite a time trying to uh, bale. There we go. Should be better now. So since last year I went through and I already tensioned all the chains and everything, I'm not even gonna look at those. That was towards the end of the year. I think it was pretty much when I was done last year is when I did all that. So, and I added a new tensioner um, in a place where one broke. It was like a wood tensioner. So I'll put a link to that video right here. Um, but the last thing on this baler that I've been really wanting to do but haven't done yet is the tire on this side is actually supposed to be a bigger tire because there's a lot more weight on this side of the machine. But I haven't 
put a new one on there. I have the original one that was on there and the original rim, which is wider as well, but it costs some money. So I've been putting it off, but as you can see here, this tire is actually flat. Not completely, but it's getting there. But this is the same tire that's on this side. And I have two of these because of that parts baler that I have down there. So this one's a little low too, so I probably need to add some air to it. But I really want to buy another tire for the other side, but I might hold off on doing that for now. Just because I'm not 100% sure how much it'll cost. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Just the cost. So I might look into that and see because it would probably be good and I'm risking blowing this tire while I'm out there because there's a lot more weight on it than what they're supposed to be. Yeah, so I think the baler is ready for this season. Um, I'm sure we're gonna run into some issues just like we did last year, cross our fingers, but I don't think we will, I don't know. It, it's an old baler and we'll just keep fixing things as they break. Um, I don't have a very big operation and I really don't want to put a whole lot of money into a new baler because they're extremely expensive. So we'll just keep running this one until something huge breaks, but odds are I'll have a part because I have that parts baler. But I think that's going to be it for this uh, video. So if you enjoy this and you enjoy this kind of content, um, stick around for more because we will be bailing shortly. So we'll see you next time. Bye.